Hey, 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 everybody. I'm back. If you were just on, I had to log off for a minute. So here I am again. I am going to pin my cash app in the in the comment section. Um, so if you want to sew into my ministry, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, and I'm gonna pin it here. Everything you sow, I'm grateful for. It always goes straight to building God's kingdom, building the ministry. The work I do is not free, and I appreciate any and every seed you sow. I'm so very grateful for each and every one of each and every one of you. I'm just pinning something in the comment section. Give me one second. But happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. Make sure you post in the comments where you join it in from. Hold on, yeah, I'm trying to pin it. Okay. Okay, there it goes. So, what's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. If you were just on my two second live, I was trying to do something. I'm trying to log into TikTok and go live on TikTok. But it's not working for me so yeah this sucks but anyway i'm gonna figure it out because i really want to go live on multiple platforms but anyway if you're new here hey welcome i appreciate you i'm grateful for you grateful for you taking time out of your schedule your day to join me live i appreciate you more than you know and so um if you are not new here welcome back but if you are new Thank you for uh, following. Thank you for joining. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. We got forgot my name on YouTube. Samantha J. West. Um, but yeah, I'm here every Wednesday, live, 6.30 Central Standard Time. Just to get into the word. I like to give you all. I like to give you the word and mix a little life in, right? Because I feel like I may be somebody's only word. And so I like to give you the word um, and like I said, mix a little life in because everything that we go through in life, it's all in the Bible. It's scripture, right? It's just, you know, sometimes, like I said, I may be the only word for some people and sometimes people may not understand it. So I try to break it down in layman terms so you'll get it and we can all get on one accord. So with that being said, thank you for joining my live. I appreciate each and every one of you, but let's get into it. Um, like I said, I couldn't go live on TikTok. Make sure you drop where you're joining in from in the comment section. I would appreciate that. And if you can give me some help on how to get live on TikTok, that's not on my phone. That would be most appreciated. It tells me I have, I have to go live for more than 25 minutes, at least one time. So I've never been live on TikTok, but anyway. I'm going to get it fixed. I'm going to get it fixed. So next week, for sure, um, I'll be live. But anyway, what's good? Happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. Your day has been nothing short of amazing. Excuse me. Thank you again for joining in. Tonight, we're going to get into excuses, right? Excuses. We all make them. We all do it all the time. All the time. <laughs> we even me so I can't I, I don't exclude myself my Wednesday wisdom talks really talk to me a lot so listen I ain't here to judge nobody I ain't coming for you I ain't trying to come at you so don't come for me okay if you feel a certain way about something that I may say or something you know whatever ask the Holy Spirit why you feel convicted don't come for me Okay, but anyway, hope you guys are doing fantastic, right? So excuses, 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 excuses. Like I said, we all make them. We always talking about, I mean, we always talking about, hold on y'all. You know, you always got to block somebody that comes on being a jerk or something. All right, but yeah. So excuses. I always say excuses is just another way of you telling God no. 
It's just another way of you saying, God, mm -mm, I'm not going to do what you're asking me to do. I don't feel like it. I don't have time. I don't have the money. I'm not going to do it because, I don't know. Some common excuses that we all use are some I just said, God, I don't have time. Or, well, you ain't saying it to God. You're really saying it to yourself. Like, I don't have time. I don't have the money. Um... <laughs> I, um, what's another common excuse? Uh, I don't feel like it. I'm tired. Whatever. Um, you know, something like, you know, God knows my heart, which gives you the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Gives you the leeway, so to speak, to continue living the life that you live in. You make it an excuse saying, oh, God knows my heart. He knows what I really want to be doing, but I ain't doing it. So, I'm, you know, but God knows my heart, you know, um, I don't know how. I don't know how to do this, you know, um, which basically just is an excuse for you to not go forward doing what God told you to do because you don't know how or, you know, uh, this just how I am. This is just how I was raised. Um, you know, you, you, when you say stuff like that, like you don't want to break those generational curses off your life. Cause that's just how you are. It's just how you were raised. And you know, like, I don't know, like what's some common excuses that y'all hear that we make a lot, right? Like I said, I'm busy. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I'm tired. I'll do it tomorrow. You know, the things that you say that you know, <laughs> that you know are excuses. I was talking to someone yesterday at work and um, he was telling me how he wants to go work out. He wants to uh, start changing his eating habits and changing his ways. And I was just like, okay. He's like, oh yeah, I brought my, I brought my, um, workout clothes. So I'm going to go and work out. And I was like, oh, okay, that's good. Blessings 1k underscore 1k says just procrastinate. Exactly. That's all excuses are. But anyway, I'm telling him, yeah, you know, that's good. I'm like, that's, that's, you know, that's a step in the right direction. And he was like, but I just really don't feel like it. And I was just like, okay. I was like, well, you brought your clothes. You might as well just go ahead and do it. And we were just talking and I said, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go walking afterwards and whatever. And something came up. I didn't end up going walking, but you know, he was like, yeah, you know, I should do that too. And I said, yeah, you should. And he was like, well, you know, it feels so much better for me to just sit in front of the game and play the game versus going to work out. And I was just like, well, you know, like I tell everybody, and I'm going to tell y'all the same thing. I told him, I said, well, when you get uncomfortable enough in a situation, then you'll do something different. You'll change. And that's just a fact. When you get uncomfortable enough, you will finally make a change, period. And so, and I say, you're just not uncomfortable enough with your body being the way that it is. You're not uncomfortable enough being unhealthy. You're not uncomfortable enough eating the way you eat. You're not uncomfortable enough yet. And when you get there, you'll do something different. And he said, yeah, you know, I know, I know what I need to do. I just make a lot of excuses as to why I shouldn't. And I was just like, well, you know, first of all, the fact that you admitted that, that's powerful. And I was like, because most people don't even like to admit when they're making excuses. They like to continue to point the finger and blame everyone else instead of saying, taking the accountability for themselves and saying, it's really just me, not somebody else. But anyway, and so, you know, but I, I told him again, like, you know, when you're ready to finally make a change, then you'll make a change, period. And I'm telling you guys the same thing. When it comes to excuses, it's just another way of you saying, God, I don't want to do it. I don't feel like doing what you're telling me to do. And a matter of fact, think about your top excuses. Mine used to be like, I don't have the money or I don't have the time, right? And I would say it all the time. And I want you to think about your top excuses, the top things you say as to why not, right? And then instead of saying, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, change it and say, God, I don't have the money to do what you told me to do. Therefore, I don't trust you because I know that you will supply all of my needs. So I don't trust you to supply all of my needs. 
because I, I don't have the money myself. Or better yet, God, I don't have the time to do what you've told me to do. I don't have the time to do it, so I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to keep making excuses and not do it. I don't have, I'm tired. God, I'm tired. I'm tired tonight. I don't feel like doing what you told me to do. You know how many times I'm on Wednesdays, I'm like, I don't feel like going live. I don't feel like doing what it's, it's sometimes I don't feel like doing what God is telling me to do. And I'm just being honest, but I've gotten so used to doing it. And I'm just in a, a mindset of, I want to do whatever God wants me to do. Cause I'm, I want to get the life God has for me, period. Right. There's, there's no excuses as to why that life should not happen for me because I'm willing to do the work. But as you start making these excuses and you, you know, um, it's just the way I am. That's one I used to say all the time too, right? Start putting, God, that's just the way I am. You made me this way. So you know that I'm not going to do it. Start putting God there and see how you really feel when you really start saying these excuses over your life, right? Cause we all do it. We all make excuses from time to time. I am not excluded and I'm not judging anybody. You know, and the thing is about excuses, we tend to believe that they're true. We tend to actually believe what we're saying, knowing we're lying to ourselves, knowing we're lying to God, but we tend to believe for some reason that is true. And excuses only hold you back. They only hold you back from becoming who God has called you to be. That's, that's it. Nothing, you, you get nothing from excuses besides Remaining in a place of stagnancy and doing the opposite of what God has told you to do. Nothing else. When you sit and think about the excuses that you make, how does it benefit your life? How does it help? How do they help you grow? How do they help you really become who you were created to be? Think about it. Think about it. Right. And like I said, I used to make excuses all the time, all the time, because I was just really comfortable with my life being the way that it was. I was broke. I was broken. I was tired. I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was constantly attracting the same type of person all the time, like all the time. And I knew that I was making excuses for my behaviors. I knew that I was constantly saying I didn't have the money. I was, I, I didn't, I was tired. I ain't feel like it. I'll do it the, another day. I was good for that. Good. You could count on me for making an excuse easily. Right. But every time I made an excuse, it was always like, I knew it was a reason why I should have pushed forward. Like, oh, you know, and you think about it, when you make excuses for you not moving forward or you pushing past the pain or whatever, when you make an excuse, you think about it. It's really a reason as to why you really should keep going, right? Oh, I don't have the money. So instead of sitting up saying, I don't have the money constantly, making that excuse and making that as a hurdle, so to speak, well, that you're not willing to climb over, that's your reason as to why you should push forward. That's your reason as to why you should change your situation. That's your reason, reason as to why you should do what God is calling you to do so that you can create additional avenues to give yourself additional money. I don't have the time. That was another thing I used to say all the time. I don't have the time. That's a reason why you should want to do something different so that you can create avenues to give you time freedom. When you sit up and think about the excuses that you make, it's really reasons as to why you should do something different. Oh, it's just how I am. Okay, but do you really like that part about you? Do you really like being that way? Where you want to continue to say, that's just who I am. That's just how I am. That gives you a reason to actually change something about yourself so you don't keep making the excuse of, well, I mean, that's just who I am. If where you are 
if who you are ain't getting you to where you want to be, then do you really like saying that's just who I am? It's just an excuse, right? And your excuses, when you really break them down, they are really reasons as to why you should push forward. They're really reasons as to why you should try to become, strive, I don't like using the word try, strive to become who God created you to be. When you really, really, really break them down. And because I wanted something different. I chose to stop making those excuses. I chose to start doing something different because I wanted a different life. I was tired of my life being the way that it was. And if you are as well, it's time for you to start taking accountability for your actions where you are in your life. Stop making excuses. Stop pointing the finger. Stop placing the blame and start owning your own stuff. If you tired of being where you are in life, then stop making excuses and do something different. Because you can make a million excuses or you can make a million dollars. It's your choice. But because I was in a place where I was completely tired of my life being the way that it was. Like I said at the very beginning, when you get uncomfortable enough, you'll stop making excuses to do something different for your life. When you get uncomfortable enough, I got to the point where I was completely uncomfortable in where I was. I was so uncomfortable being broken. I was so uncomfortable attracting the same type of person with a diff with same soul, different face. I was so uncomfortable being broke. I was so uncomfortable saying that I want to do it, but never accomplishing my goals. I was so uncomfortable saying I want to take my relationship with God to another level, but it never going anywhere. I was so uncomfortable living that life. I was so uncomfortable being stuck. I was so uncomfortable. And I got to the point where I was, I was completely uncomfortable with being on, on welfare, being in the, in the government assistance line getting Christmas gifts for my kids because I ain't have any money. I was uncomfortable with that. I ain't knocking nobody, but I was uncomfortable in that life. And I got to the point where I said, I'm tired of being uncomfortable. I'm tired of this, this type of uncomfortability. If that's even a word. I'm tired of that. So I'm going to do something different to change it. And so I got, as hard as it was, I had to start holding myself accountable. I had to start realizing why my life was where it was. I had to start really like owning my own toxic traits in my own ways. I used to say all the time, like, that's just how I am. I used to be really, really mean, like mean. Okay. <laughs> like, and I had, I always had a very blunt mouth, like, God is still doing the work on me in that area, okay? But I, I really just, you know, I, I'm very blunt, very direct. It's it's definitely gotten better over the years. But I used to be worse, way worse. And I was so mean. And I was just extremely selfish and just stubborn, just horrible. Like, And um, I had to say, you know, face myself and say, like, why do I keep getting certain things? Like, why am I continuing to attract certain things, certain people, just stuff? And I know I'm tired of this life. What is it about me that needs to change? What do I need to do differently? And so I started owning my own stuff. I started holding myself accountable. And I started realizing the lies that I was telling myself. And how I was coming up with all these excuses as to why not. I was coming up with, to, with every excuse I could think of as to why I shouldn't be doing something. And as a result, I was attracting everything I didn't want. I was doing things that I didn't want to do because I was constantly speaking those things out of my life, out of my mouth. But I decided I wanted something different. Like I was tired of not having a nest egg for my kids. If something were to happen to me, 
they didn't have anything. I just pray about it and anything I can't have clarity on. Yeah, they didn't have anything. So I was in that place where I was just uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable thinking about if I die, what would I leave my kids? I, I, I really got to that place of completely uncomfortable with my life and the, the excuses I was making for my life and the habit of excuses, the habit of me constantly making excuses. So I chose to do something different because I was just, I was just done. I was tired of it. Okay. Riz one of one. Yeah, I didn't understand your comment. So thanks for the clarification. But um, I get it. Like, listen, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not coming for you. I'm not coming for anyone. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, I, I'm not going to even touch that. But anyway, I was tired of making excuses, right? I was tired of my life being the way it was. So I said, you know what, Samantha? It's time to do something different. And that's what I chose to do. I chose to stop making the excuses and start making changes. Stop making, you know, like, sorry, y'all. And start, just start, stop making excuses. Stop pointing the finger. Start accepting my own toxic traits. Start holding myself accountable and really start growing. Right? Excuses just handicap you. They just, it's just a way that you remain handicapped. And it's really just behaviors that hurt your own performance. They hurt you. Excuses hurt you. They don't motivate you. Don't, they don't inspire you. They don't push you forward. They don't encourage you. If you're hanging around people that's constantly making excuses, it'll start to, you'll start to realize, like the more you grow and the more you start to realize your own excuses and you come out of it and you start being around people that's making them constantly, it becomes annoying. It becomes annoying. And you really sit up and think like, dang, like and you look at their life like you're really not moving forward because of all the excuses that you're making. All the excuses you're making, like I said with the guy, yesterday like he's on the larger side and so instead of him doing something different with his life he would rather continue to live that life and play the games which is not helping his health not helping him and continue to make the excuses for that right so no matter how you look at it excuses are never really like a valid reason it's never a valid reason as to why you cannot do what you're supposed to be doing. Never. No matter how you look at it. And what truly separates those of us that are successful from those that are unsuccessful is just excuses. Excuses. Successful people tend to... Successful people tend to... We fail, but we get back up. We don't make the excuse of, well, we fail. We fail, not failed, but we fail. Therefore, I might as well stay down here. We don't make the excuse of, I, I just don't have the money. We figure it out. We make a way. We figure it out. Do it broke. If you don't have the money, do it broke. When I first started my business, I only had about, I think I had like maybe... $90 to my name, like legit $90 to my name. And I always made an excuse. I always made an excuse as to why I wasn't going forward. Um, I don't know if it was fear. I don't know, but I always made an excuse as to why I wasn't going forward. So when God first told me to, you know, just start telling my story, my thing was no, I, I don't want people to know my story because it's embarrassing, right? 
And then it became, you know, I don't have the money, God, to do what you're telling me to do. I, I really legit didn't, you know what I'm saying? And in my mind, I thought it was legit because I'm like, I really don't have the money. However, if you're saying that you really trust God, then you know God is going to provide. You know God is going to make a way, right? So you really think about it. It is just an excuse. And I was broke. When I, when I started my business, I was completely broke. I was completely broke. And I used to use that as a crutch. It was like, you know, I don't have the money and, you know, I ain't got the time, whatever. And then when I finally got blessed me with some additional money, right? And when I finally did get the money, I didn't use it the way I was supposed to. I used it on... Um, I paid someone to do a logo for me, to do a website for me, and to make it pretty. But I didn't have anything to make pretty. I had, like, the vision, the idea, but I wasn't doing the work. I was making an excuse, constantly pushing it back. So I was making the excuse of, well, it has to be perfect. It has to be pretty. It has to be nice before I can bring it out, before I can tell the world what God telling me to do. It got to be perfect. And I, st I, I, it kept me stuck for years because I want, I was looking for perfection and God was just like, just do what I told you to do. But I wanted it perfect first. So I, I just made the excuse. Like I wanted to look a certain way. It needs to be this way, that way, that, 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 that. It, I cannot move forward without it doing this. Uh, I don't have the money, but you gave me the money and now I'm spending on this. And I just, I made excuses about it for years. And I stayed in that place for years, for years, just stuck. Paid somebody to do my logo and that ended up being a whole, whatever. I didn't get it done at that time. And I just made excuses for me to stay in that space. And thought it was okay because I'm like, well, I got legit reasons. It's a legit reason I really don't have the money. I really don't have the time. But you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised that when you start making excuses, how much time you really do have. You'll be surprised at how much time you can really make when you stop making excuses as to why you can't. You'll be surprised at how God shows up with the money that you say you don't have when you start to trust him and you stop making excuses as to why you can't do what he's telling you to do. You'll be surprised at the money he shows up with and gives you when you stop being in your own way. The top three reasons people aren't progressing in life are excuses. It's either you're waiting on things to be perfect before you start, like I was. You're waiting on things to be perfect and you already know it's, it'll never be perfect. Nothing in life will ever be perfect, ever. You already know that, but you're waiting on it to be perfect. You're making the excuse of it has to look a certain way first before I get started. You're looking for perfection. And so you keep coming up with an excuse as to why you're not getting started because you're looking for perfection. Another reason people don't do what God is telling them to do is an excuse. These are top three reasons now. I don't have the money. I don't have the money. And at the end of the day, no, I don't have enough money. Let me be clear. At the end of the day, you never will. <laughs> to be clear, especially when you first start, you will never have enough money to do all that you need to do or all you feel you need to do before you get started in your business or before you get started doing what God is telling you to do. You will never have enough money at the beginning. And even as your business grows, your business expenses grow, your desires change, you know, like your people that are depending on you for money change, it grows. So all of that grows too. So you having enough money is always going to be you chasing that money. If you continue to make that excuse, because you're never going to have enough. In your eyes. You're never going to have enough, right? 
Top three reasons people aren't moving forward and doing what God is telling them to do. The third one is I'm waiting on God. I hear that so much. I hear it so much. And I'm just like, well, really, God is waiting on you. God already told you what to do. You're just making an excuse. You're just procrastinating. You're just sitting on your butt, sitting on your potential, not doing it. But God already told you what to do. Because you, I guarantee you, somebody on this live just thought about, hmm, I did feel that. I, I felt an intuition to, my intuition told me I should do this. I felt, I heard God say that. I, whether you heard it audibly or not. You know what God already told you to do. You know. So you ain't waiting on God. God waiting on you to trust him. God waiting on you to move. Excuses. You just making excuses to keep being where you are. And not a single one of those excuses I just gave you are valid. Not a single one is a valid enough reason for you to continue to stay what you, where you are doing what you're doing. Not a single one. Excuses. At some point, you got to own your stuff. At some point, you got to stop lying to yourself. At some point, at some point, you got to get uncomfortable with being in the place of where you are. At some point, you got to know enough is enough. And you got to stop making excuses for your life to continue to stay where it is. At some point, you got to get tired of it, right? And as I have grown over the years, my excuses have become less and less. So now I really just hold myself accountable and... I, I, if, if I want to say no, I say no. If I, you know, if I, if, if I don't have the money, I figure it out. Just like I figure everything else out. Especially if you're a parent listening to this live. The same way you figure everything else out for your kids, you can figure out how you can make it happen for God. And don't say you can't. Even if you're not a parent, you figure things out. You figure it out. So if you don't have enough money... Figure it out. Figure it out. Do it broke. Like I said, I started my business. I had like $90. $90. That excuse of not having enough money kept me in a place of stagnancy for years. Eventually, I just said, whatever. I'm just going to start with what I have. I'm going to do what I got. I had a computer that was probably like on this last leg. The lighting in my house at the time was horrible. I didn't have like a spotlight. I didn't have an office. The the furniture, the desk I had, I had in space for an office, but it wasn't like built out because the desk I had was like wobbly. It was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. If you ever go back and look at some of my old videos, it was horrible. It was horrible. But I keep them up for that reason to see how far I've come. But anyway, I had about $90 to my name and I just got tired of saying like, I don't have the money. I got tired of saying that. Cause I'm like, at what point am I gonna stop? Am I gonna have the money? At what point am I gonna stop making this excuse of not having the money? Something has to change if I want to have the money. So I stopped making the excuses over my life. Right? So let's take it to the scripture. I always like to come from the word because I don't want anybody to think Samantha just sitting on here talking. I don't have nothing better to do and I'm just talking about my life, my story. Nope. I'm coming from the word, right? So let's take it to the scripture. Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. If you don't know the story in Exodus... I'll give you a brief synopsis. Like I said, I'm going to just, I try to keep it in layman terms. I'm not adding or taking away from the Bible. Um, I just make it very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very understandable. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Very understandable for 
you. Because I truly may be your only word, right? So let's take it to Exodus. In Exodus is where God has gone to Moses and told him that um, he wants him to take the people, go deliver his people from Pharaoh, a king who was mistreating the Israelites, right? He was in Egypt. The king of Egypt was mistreating the Israelites and he wanted Moses to go and rescue them. All right, and so it's starting out that way, and God is telling Moses, like, this is what I want you to do. You're called to do this, right? And so Moses comes up with every excuse that he could, literally. Every excuse that he could as to why not. <laughs> every single excuse. Uh, the first one, we're going to go from Moses chapter 3, verse 11. God tells him, you know, before 11 he says you know go now and tell tell pharaoh to let my people go tell him to release the egyptian my israel the israelites out of egypt so that they can go to the wilderness to worship me right the very first thing moses says to god is um but who am i that i should go to pharaoh and bring the israelites out of jesus out of egypt who am i to confront a king who am I to do what you told me to do, God? When you bigger than the king, you bigger than the world, you bigger than everything going on, but who am I to go and tell this king to do something you told me to do? To do something you told me to tell him? Who am I? I'm afraid. Excuse number one. I'm afraid. And you know what God told him? Don't worry about it. I'm with you. Don't even worry about it. I got you. I'm going to be with you. He said, don't fear. God said, I will be with you. And this, is, this will be the sign to you that it is I who has sent you. You've brought the people out of um, Egypt. I'm going to give you things to give them signs to, so they know that I sent you. I'm sending you. I gave you an assignment. You, I'm talking to you. I gave you an assignment. And you came back and told me, God, I'm afraid. I don't know who am I to go and do this, what you've told me to do. God is telling you, I got you. Don't even worry about it. Don't focus on how, what, why, when, where. I posted that today. Don't focus on the, all the questions of how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, what can, who are you. If God chose you, that means he knows exactly who you are. He chose you to do it. But you saying, God, I'm afraid. I'm afraid because you chose me. You believe in me, but I don't believe in me. And I, I don't believe in you enough. To actually do what you're telling me to do. I believe in you to an extent. So as a result, I'm just going to make an excuse as to why I'm not going to go do what you told me to do. See how it sounds when you actually have a conversation with God? <laughs> and you telling him no? You telling him like, nah, I ain't going to do it, God, because I'm afraid. My excuse is not valid enough, but that's what I'm going to tell you because I feel like it's valid. I know it's an excuse. I know it's an excuse. It ain't helping me. It ain't helping build your kingdom. Y'all, you feel me? So Moses tells God, I'm afraid. He tells him, no, nah, like, who am I? Who am I to do this? Love lay. Ask me later, okay? And I'll I'll tell I'll answer that. But when you have a relationship with God, people tend to get mixed up religion and relationship, right? Religion is not a relationship. When you have a relationship with God, a strong relationship at that, then you tend to have courage to do things that God is telling you to do. You have a backing, you because you know. That God is with you. Isn't that what I said he told Moses? Don't worry about it. I'm with you. 
So when you have a relationship with God, you have that courage to do things that you wouldn't normally do. And as God continues to build that courage in you and build, build your strength in him, your faith in him, guess what happens? Your excuses kind of go to the side. You stop making excuses because you're like, you know what? The excuse of I'm fearful, or, I'm, I'm afraid goes to the side because you're like, well, yeah, I may not know what I'm going to do. I may not know how to do it, but I know God is with me. But I know God is with me because that's what he said. I will be with you. Don't worry about it. I'll be with you. You don't have to be afraid because I'm with you. See how your excuse becomes non non-existent because now you rely you 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 go into the word and you say, "Well, this is what God said." And if I really trust God, then I can walk in what God said and I can stand on it. Right? So what and and that's what it takes like when you build a relationship with God. And you start building, it really helps your excuses go out the door and it helps you do things that you wouldn't necessarily do on your own. Excuse number two. Excuse number two that Moses made when God told him, Hey, Carnies, thank you for your badge. I appreciate you. But excuse number two that Moses gave God when God told him, Hey, Go get my people. Save my people from Pharaoh. He's abusing them. Excuse number two. Moses said, let's say I go to the people. This is uh, chapter three, verse 13, right? If you, you, you just joined in Exodus chapter three, verse 13. Moses said, Moses said, let's say I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your fathers, how do I read? Suppose I go to, Israel, to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, well, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? His second excuse, his second excuse was, I might get pushback. People might not accept who you tell me. Who, who am I? They might not. They might not accept it. How many of y'all do the same thing? How many of us do that? God telling telling you to move. God telling you to do. God telling you to do uh, X, Y, Z. But you thinking about what somebody else going to say. You thinking about what your family might think. You thinking about how your friends might feel. You, think, you thinking about getting pushed back from your friends, your family, and people that's in your life versus thinking about what God told you to do. You'd rather make an excuse to not do what God told you to do because you afraid of pushback. You afraid of what somebody else got to say. Not what God telling you. You afraid of you afraid of their voice more than you afraid of his. That's a problem. That's a problem. So you so Moses make his, makes the excuse. Well, I might get pushed back, God. Like, first of all, who am I? Why would you send me? I'm, a, I'm scared to go. Secondly, what if they don't what if they don't receive my message? They get, I might get pushed back. What if they don't support me? I might get pushed back. Guess what God told him? God said, it's not about you. <laughs> he said, you want to tell them who sent you? Tell them I am that I am. I am that I am. That's what you tell them. That's what, that's who, that's what you are to say to the Israelites. That I am who I am sent me. I am who I am. The eternal God of gods. The, the eternal God of 
the, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the, the god of gods. I am who I am. <laughs> That's who sent you. So when you're standing on God's word and you're like, you know what? What about what my, what my family might say? Because I, I go hard for God. And I, I, I tell some of my story. And I'm, I'm actually telling this is true right here, right? My family. I share a lot of my life, you know, it, kind of an open book you know i'm very selective about what i say however i know i have to say certain things in order to help people move right and save souls so my family gave me and still do at times pushback for me following god the way that i do Island Beauty, I'm in Exodus chapter 3. I'm at uh, verse uh, 14 now. But um, I get pushback. You know what I'm saying? I get pushback from friends and family. They don't always necessarily support me. I went home the other day, a couple of weeks ago, and I've given messages to my family that God has told me to give, right? Um, and because I'm being obedient to God, I used to be afraid, so to speak, like Moses, I used to be afraid to say what God told me to say to my family and even to other people. Right. Um, and I would minimize myself a lot, a lot. And I wouldn't do, I wouldn't say what God told me to say. I wouldn't do what God told me to do because I was just afraid. I was afraid of what they may say, how they may think about me, how they may feel. And I went home the other week and um, from messages that I had given them, God told me to give about certain things and how they may be living their life. You know, um, I, they, they told me they didn't like it. <laughs> they didn't like it, right? They don't like the way that I give, I give the message. So they're not necessarily, you welcome, baby. Um, they're not necessarily receiving it because they don't, they don't like it. They don't necessarily like how I give it. And I believe my sister said, you know, um, it's not received because of who's giving it. And my response was, well, so if God sends an angel to tell you a message and you don't like that person, you don't like the what they're saying, but God told them to say it the way that they say it. Would you not receive it? I don't know if I got an answer to that. But anyway, they they told me, you know, like some of the stuff I've said in in my lives uh, because I've talked, I've spoken about my family, being very candid about it, whatever. Um, that they didn't like it, and so and I said, you know what, God, you told me to say this. You told me this is what I need to say and this is how I need to say it. So they don't like what I'm saying, God. So how can I continue to be obedient to you and do your will and please them too? It was like, you can't. You can't please me and your family. You got to pick, pick pick one. Right? But I, I used to, I didn't want to I got the pushback is what I'm trying to say. And and I, I stood on what I said, though. And I was just like, my sister even said, like, how you know X, Y, Z, right? And I was just like, well, you know how I can be so sure on what I'm saying right now and how I feel that I know what I'm saying is true? I said, because I'm sure of what God told me. I'm sure of his voice. I'm sure that God is who he says he is. I'm confident in that. And that it wasn't much they could say after that. So my point in saying that is. My point in saying that is. You're going to get pushed back. The more you grow in God. The more you grow in life. The more you start healing and, and coming out of cycles. That you're used to. The more you start holding yourself accountable 
Stop making excuses and you still around people that are making excuses, making it okay, then you're going to get pushback. You're going to get people that don't like it. You're going to, you know how many people come at me for <laughs> being a mouthpiece, mouth, the mouthpiece for God. People don't like it. God told me years ago that I would be a mirror. That I'm a mirror. I'm to put a mirror in people's face to show them the things that they try to sweep under the rug. You think that's an easy assignment? Absolutely not. You know how many people push back and don't like it? Because that's what I have to do. But we talk about excuses, right? I stopped allowing my excuses to stop me because I know what did God tell Moses? He said, who, tell them who, who sent you. I am who I am because I know the great I am. God of God's King of Kings, Lord of Lords sent me to do what I'm supposed to do. So I don't have to make an excuse as to why I shouldn't do it. I don't have to make an excuse. I don't have to wonder what if they don't like what I'm saying. I don't care. Right? The third reason. The third reason that. Um, I mean the third excuse Moses made. When God told him to. Um, go get his people. The third excuse he made. Is. We are now we are in Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. The third excuse he made was, what if they don't trust me, God? People are the problem. <laughs> People got an issue with you coming to tell me to do something that they don't want to do. What if they don't trust me? What if they don't listen to a single word that I say? What if, what if they don't like what I say? What if they don't listen to a single word that I say? He said, uh, what if they do not believe me or listen to me? And they say, the Lord did not appear to you. Basically telling you, you lying. Telling you, you lying. So not only are you wondering who am I to go tell these people this, not only are you getting pushback from family and friends, but now they telling you, you lying. You ain't hear from God. God didn't tell you to do that. My family told me that two weeks ago. They told me, called me a liar and everything. Cause I told them that God told me to give them a message about the life they live in, they need to repent. No judgment. I just know what I heard. Right? And they like, God didn't tell you that. <laughs> anyway, Moses says, <laughs> Moses says, you know, what if they don't trust me? These are the excuses he's coming up with. God, God told him to do something, and these are the excuses that he's coming up with to go against what God's telling him to do. And I'm putting it in straight layman terms because I want it to resonate with you so much. Because I know you do the same thing. We all do. We make the same excuses. Like I said, start saying, God... People, they don't, they don't trust me. They don't trust that you telling me to do something. So I don't really do it because they don't trust me. But you trust me enough to tell me to do it, but they don't. So I ain't going to do it. That was his third excuse. He said, what if they don't trust me? Guess what God said? God had something for every excuse. He like... I hear you, but these excuses ain't finna work with me. They ain't gonna work with me. Because guess what? God said, I'm bigger than the people. <laughs> I'm bigger than them. So, who cares if they don't trust you? I'm bigger than them. 
I told you to do it. Who cares what they got to say? Exodus verses, uh, chapter 4, verses 2 through 5. He says, I got my word. The Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And, and Moses replied, he said, a staff. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. And then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out his hand and took hold of the snake and turned it back into a staff. And it turned back into a staff in his hand. And this, this, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, their God, the, the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac and Jacob has appeared to you. Not only am I going to shut your excuse down, I'm giving you proof. I'm giving you proof so that you can show the people that I told you to do it. And you think God ain't going to give you something to show people? You, you think that he ain't going to show up and give you a sign, so to speak? So you'll have something backing you? For people that, that's calling you a lie. Think about it. You're making excuses and you're really only hindering yourself. You're really only hurting yourself. You're really only lying to yourself. Because God got an answer for every excuse you make. God got an answer for it. I don't have the money, God, but I will supply all of your needs. So why are you worried about money? <laughs> you know, I ain't got no support, but I'm with you. Why are you worried about who else don't support you? Excuse number four, Moses came up with. He said, and this is from Exodus chapter uh, four, verse 10. He says, um, hold on, I lost my place. So this is excuse number four. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. I'm not talented enough. I can't, I can't talk. I can't talk right. I stutter. I'm not talented enough. I'm not. I'm not good enough for you to for, for me to do what you're telling me to do, God. I I I was born this way. I you know, like I said, I, I stutter. This this is what Moses is saying. Like I don't speak well. I don't speak clearly for people to really understand me. I'm, so I'm not talented enough. Have you ever felt that way and said it? God, I, I, I'm not a, I don't, I don't feel like I can do what you told me to do. But you called me to do it, so I know you know I can. But I don't feel like I'm talented enough to do it. Excuses. Excuses. He told him, I'm not talented enough. He said, I'm not, a, I'm not good with words. I'm not a talented speaker. Not when I was younger. And I haven't gotten any better. I stutter. My words get all twisted up. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. But guess what God said? Because what I tell you, God got an answer for every last one of your excuses. So really, you have no excuse. Because God got an answer for it. You have no excuse. God told him, I will make up for whatever you lack. I'll make up for whatever you lack. Verse 11. He told him, so four, um, chapter 4, verse 11. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who, who gave you that mouth? Who told, who, I know you can't, I know you stutter. I know you 
don't have you don't speak the best, but who gave you your mouth? Who gave you those gifts? Who put that gift inside of you? Who gave it to you? He says, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? <laughs> Is it not God that gave you your talents? You were born with something inside of you. You were born with it. God put it inside of you before you were born. So what make you think you ain't good enough to do what God put inside of you to do? What make you think you ain't good enough? Straight up. God told him in verse 12, he said, go now and I will be there to give you the words to speak. I will tell you what to say. I'll, I will make up for whatever you lack. So whatever area you feeling like you're not good enough in. God said, I will make up for it. I'll give you whatever it is that you lack it. So if you feeling like you, 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 I don't know, not creative enough, or you can't talk like Moses said, or you feeling like, I don't know, some stumbling blocks, right? I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. But whatever area you feel like you lacking in, first of all, God put it inside of you. So he knows you can do it. If, if he didn't believe you could do it, he wouldn't be calling you to do it. He wouldn't choose you to do it. So whatever area you feel like you're lacking in, whatever area you feel like you're lacking in, God said, I will make up for whatever you lack. I don't know the Bible like that. I'm learning it. I read it every day. I'm learning it, right? But I don't know all the, <laughs> to be able to come and give you all stories and scriptures and Listen, I, I promise you, it's got to be the Holy Spirit. Got to be God. Because I legit, I just read it. <laughs> and as I'm in my quiet time with God, I, God just gives me words. He gives me what he wants me to say to you guys on Wednesdays. I don't, I don't be knowing. I don't be knowing half of the stuff God want me to do. I don't know how to do it all. I just trust God because I know what he said. He going to make up for whatever I lack. Whatever I lack. So that means if, if I don't have the money, guess what? God said he going to make up for it. If I'm drawing a, a blank in my creative mind and process, guess what? God said he going to make up for it. And he may do just like he did Moses. He sent somebody with him. He told his brother to go with him. He said, okay, I hear you. Another excuse. I hear you. You don't feel like you're good enough. Oh, I'm going to send your brother. He can talk. He can talk better than you. So I'm going to send him. <laughs> I'm going to send him. I'm going to send you people that can do what you can't do. I'm going to send you people that can do what you can't do. The area you like, I'm going to send somebody to help you in that area. Or I'm going to equip you with what you need because I'm going to give you what you lack. I'll make up for it. So what's your excuse? What's your excuse? When you really sit and think about it this way, do you really have an excuse to not be doing what God telling you to do. What's your excuse? None. Like Revolving Treasure said, none. Excuse number five, Moses gave to God. Excuse number five, just refusal. He got to the point like, oh, well, everything I say, God got something to say. God got a reason. He got something better. He got a reason why 
that excuse ain't gonna work. <laughs> so, I don't know what else to say. I ain't got no more excuses. So now, he gets to the point where he just like, we in uh, chapter five now, Exodus chapter five. He gets to the point now, Exodus chapter five, verse 13, where he just refused. Am I right? Hold on. No, I'm sorry. It's not. It's excuse number five, but it's Exodus chapter four, verse 13. He just refused this. He said, but pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. I don't want to do what you're telling me to do. I, I ain't got no more excuses. I can't lie to myself no more. I can't lie to you because you're coming back with everything that's negating my excuses. Just send somebody else. I can't even I can't even tell you no more lies. I can't even give you no more valid reasons why not. Cause I my excuses, they don't work with you. So just send somebody else. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Have you ever said that before? When God told you to do, do something? I just don't want to. You may not say it in those terms or that phrase, but when you say, when you make up all these excuses, that's exactly what you're saying. I just don't want to. I don't want to do it, God. And that's where Moses got. He said, please, just send somebody else. <laughs> just send somebody else. And this one isn't so much of an excuse. It's just when you get to the point where you realize you have no other excuse, what do you say? So that's where Moses got. He, he, he had nothing else to say, so he just said, he just said what, what, what he felt like saying. At that point, he couldn't make up no more excuses. God got angry with him. God got angry with Moses because he was tired of him making excuses. He was tired of him giving him reasons why he shouldn't be doing what he told him to do. Sound familiar? You think God up there happy that you ain't doing what he's telling you to do? That you being disobedient every single day? All the time? You think he proud of you for that? And this ain't to come down on nobody. This ain't. We all make excuses. I ain't, ain't nobody better than nobody on this live. Better than certain things and certain behaviors, certain habits. Yeah. But I ain't coming down on you. But do you really believe that God is satisfied with you constantly making excuses as to why you're not doing what he's telling you to do? In your heart of hearts, do you really believe that? God got angry with Moses because he's like, listen, like, you're making all these excuses. I done told you. I got you. I done told you I'm with you. I have given, I'm giving you proof for the pushback. I'm, I'm, I'm canceling out every single excuse that you can give. So he got angry with him. That's when he told him, listen, all right, whatever. We're going to send you with your brother because you're going to do what I told you to do. You know, when God calls, he's going to keep calling until you answer. The call doesn't go away. So no matter how many excuses you make, God always got to an answer. So he said, I'm going to send you with your brother since you 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 scared, you don't want to do it. You 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 feel like your 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 speech is not eloquent enough. All right, just go with your brother because your brother gonna speak for you. Your brother, everything I tell you to say, you tell your brother. Your brother gonna say it. So you ain't got no more excuses now. Now you ain't got no choice but to do it. And that's how God get with us. He like. He, he has eliminated every single excuse that you can make in his word. Every last one of them. When you really sit and think about it, 
Your excuses don't fly with God. And people might not like this message because it's hidden home. Because I know everybody guilty of making excuses. I know it. But anyway, right? So as you can see, I gave you some good examples of how Moses came up with every single excuse that he could as to why he should not do what God is telling him to do. How often do you do the same thing? You come up with every single excuse that you can instead of holding yourself accountable and doing what God's telling you to do. Every excuse that you can. And like I said earlier, none of them are really valid reasons as to why you can't do what God telling you to do. People would rather make excuses versus making things happen. You'd rather continue to say why not. You'd rather continue to have a crutch that you can lean on versus coming off of the crutch so that you can walk right. You would rather continue to find an excuse versus finding a way. You do the same things. I gave you five excuses of why Moses, four, right? Plus one just flat out refusal of why Moses did not want to do what God told him to do. They were all excuses. Not a single one of them was valid. So my question to you is, what is your excuse? What is your excuse? Why aren't you doing what God has told you to do? What is your excuse? I'll wait. I don't see nobody responding. What's your excuse? Why aren't you doing what God has told you to do? What excuses have you been making to God as to why you're not doing what he told you to do? There are souls that need to be saved on this earth. People literally going to hell every single day. And you busy making an excuse as to why you can't do what God's telling you to do. It's work that needs to be done. And you would rather sit around and make an excuse. You would rather continue to allow money to stop you. Lack of money to stop you. Lack of time to stop you. Uh, this is who I am to, to continue to stop you. Versus saving somebody's soul. And that's okay to you. Gotta get to the point where that ain't okay no more. Because that ain't okay. Souls literally going to hell every day. Every day. I love the accountability. I love the honesty. Somebody else responded. Love laziness laziness and uncertainty. It's not enough trust in God. So what can you do to fix that? I come on here every week and I give you our tips, pointers, strategies on how you can grow your relationship with God, how you can grow in life, how you can, you know, work on yourself. Because at some point, you got to get tired of making the excuses. Right? I want you to write that question down. What excuses have I been making to God? What is my excuse? What are my excuses? What excuses have I been making to God as to why I cannot do or won't do? Because you can do it. You can do it. So what excuses am I making to God as to why I won't do what he's telling me to do? Fear and self-doubt, building my relationship, uh oh, sorry, building my relationship with God, be intentional. Yeah, I agree. Lack of faith. 
I always say this. People have faith to an extent. The Bible says you should have, and this is kind of off topic, but the Bible says you should have the faith, faith the size of a mustard seed, right? And it can move mountains. But I always say that's true. However, you have to have, your faith has to grow. A mustard seed, when, I don't know how it becomes like, I don't know if it becomes like, um, I don't know, does it become a tree? I might be, I don't know, does it be, does it grow? My point is, right, I know at some point you got to have, even if it stays a seed, I don't know. At some point you have to have a lot of seeds to make some mustard, right? Like spreadable mustard. So it's the same thing about your faith. At some point, you have to grow your faith. It has to expand. You stand in a space of, you got to have a faith the size of a mustard seed, but that faith ain't taking you to the next level. It ain't helping you jump. It ain't helping you trust God fully and completely. Because you're still living in fear, which is, of course, not of God. You're still making excuses as to why you're not following God. And you're still in the same place that you were last month, last year, two years ago, whatever. So something ain't working. Something ain't working. But let's get back to the topic, right? I want y'all to write that down. What excuses am I making? What is my excuse? And what excuses am I making as to why I'm not doing what God's telling me to do? It keeps, excuses are deadly and it keeps you, it hinders your growth in God. So, as always, in true Samantha form, I'm going to give you three ways, three ways, three ways that you can stop making excuses and start making progress. All right, three ways. Number one, Stop blaming. Stop pointing the finger and blaming somebody else for your life. Stop blaming other people for your life. Take accountability for your stuff. Stop blaming. If you want to stop making excuses, you got to first stop blaming others for the things that you are doing wrong. Stop blaming them and, and be responsible and mature enough to accept accountability for your actions. Kearney said procrastinating. I love the accountability. I love that you guys are owning your stuff. So now you, you got answers. What are you going to do differently to change that? So you can stop making excuses and start making progress. So stop blaming. That's the number one way you can stop making excuses. Start being accountable for your own stuff. Even way back Adam and Eve... And I'm gonna put it in the synopsis, but Adam and Eve, it was always, it was a blame game. Adam, um, Eve bit into the apple because the serpent made her, but uh, she, Adam ended up biting into it too. Adam says it was Eve's fault. And instead of owning it, you're right, I did bite into the apple. Shouldn't have done it, I was wrong. Instead of owning it, he said, it was Eve's fault, she made me. She made me do it. And Eve said, well, the serpent made me do it. Ain't nobody want to hold themselves accountable for being wrong. We make mistakes. We wrong. You human. Own your stuff. If I cursed, I want to say something else. Own your stuff. Own it. Hold yourself accountable, right? Because... You don't, you don't just blame other people. A lot of people have a tendency to blame God. God made me this way. Well, if God made, if that's working for you, keep doing it. But nine times out of ten, it ain't working for you. God made me this way, so he know 
He know who I am. He know what I like. He know, he know my heart. I can keep doing it because God made me this way. I can keep lying to myself. I can keep making excuses for my life and doing the things that I'm doing because God made me this way. And I'm going I'm to blame God because he made me like this. Like real talk. Seriously. Listen to yourself. Seriously. Stop blaming other people. Stop blaming God. Own your stuff. Blame yourself. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. That helps you to stop making excuses. That's going to help making you stop making excuses. Accountability shows that you are owning your stuff. You're willing to own, say what you say, own what you did. On your part. And when you start owning your stuff and being responsible for your role in your life, then God gives you more responsibility. God starts to trust you more. Because now you ain't pointing the finger at somebody else when you're wrong. You, you, you owning it. And God says, okay. She growing up. <laughs> he growing up. I can give him more responsibility now. I can trust him now because he owning his excuses. She owning her excuses. And she trying to stop making them. She ain't blaming nobody else. Because I've given her every reason why she can't keep making excuses. So that's number one. Stop blaming other people for your life. That'll help you stop making excuses for your life. Number two, be obedient. Obey. Be obedient. It sounds simple, but it's really not. I did a whole live on obedience because that's really the key to hearing God's voice. Like that's the number one thing, obedience. Right? It's, it's so much easier said than done. Following God is not just about doing what he tells you to do, but doing it from your heart. When you actually start doing things from your heart, you don't tend and you follow God and you really have a desire to do what God is telling you to do. You tend to shy away from making excuses. You tend to no longer say I'm lazy or I'm, I'm just going to continue to procrastinate or I don't feel like it because your desire to please God, your desire to be obedient is stronger than your desire to continue to make an excuse. It's stronger than your desire to continue to make an excuse and you're doing it from your heart. The more it gets into your heart, the more... The more it gets into your heart, the less inclined you are to make an excuse as to why not. Right? So be obedient. You know what God told you to do. You know what God has told you to do. Do it. What, what exactly are you scared of? If you know that God, if you really trust God like you say you do, what you scared of? God said, what I just say in the word, I'm with you. That's what he told Moses when he gave his first excuse. I'm with you, though. So what are you scared of? Do what God told you to do. Just be obedient. Leave it all in his hands. Obedience. Um... I could give an example, but um, for time purposes, I won't, right? Um, when you obey God, you don't have to make excuses anymore because it's saying that you trust him now. You trust God, so you're not going to make an excuse as to why you can't do what he's telling you to do. Because now you're being obedient. You're doing what he's telling you to do, Right? You trust him that he's going to do exactly what he said and 
you're going to stop making excuses not believing that he won't do what he said. Because fear, procrastination, and I forget the other ones that some people named, they are only excuses. Can y'all hear me? Sorry. Okay. There's only excuses because you don't trust God. But I think somebody said that. So you continue to make excuses because you're being disobedient. So just obey. The Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. Even if you have the best intentions, if it isn't in, in line with God's will and purpose, you're going to end up failing. You're going to continue to make an excuse as to why not. Because you'd rather continue to be disobedient. All right. And then point number three as to how you can stop making excuses and start making progress is concentrate on the reward. Focus on what God said. Focus on the promises that God has spoken over your life. I'm reading Deuteronomy now in the Bible. And this is so, Exodus is where God is telling Moses to get the uh, Israelites out of Egypt. So Deuteronomy is where they're coming out. They stayed in the wilderness for years, whatever. Deuteronomy is where they're coming out. And somebody else is to lead them into the promised land. So Moses couldn't even lead them because... They ended up being disobedient, complaining, all that stuff, right? But anyway, I've been, I'm reading uh, Deuteronomy now, and it's talking about the promised land. It's talking about, you know, you're going into this land of overflow, basically. Milk and honey, like things that you didn't, you didn't even plant. Cities that you didn't even build, you about to have. And, you know, um, stuff that you didn't even plant. I read it this morning. Hold on, it says... He said, you're about to cross over into a good land. Um, hold on. Flourishing, with flourishing cities that you didn't build. Houses filled with all kinds of good things that you did not provide. Wells that you didn't dig. Vineyards that you didn't plant. And this is going to be blessings for you and your kids and for generations to come. Generations to come. And when I read that, I underlined it and I've been just kind of staying there because I'm just like, I'm walking in my promise season in the land of living. I am going to get what God told me I can have. So I don't, I don't care what come at me. I don't care. I'm going to get it because I'm focused on my reward for my obedience. I'm focused on my reward for my diligence. I'm focused on my reward for my endurance. I'm focused on my reward for my perseverance. I'm focused on my reward for my um, obedience. I'm concentrating on the reward. And guess what? I have no excuse. I'm not making an excuse as to why I cannot do what God telling me to do because I am so focused on my promised land. Get into my land that I have had to fight hard to get to. So I'm so concentrated on it that I ain't going to make an excuse as to why not. You got to get concentrated on the reward. Because if something is important to you, you're going to find a way. If it's not, you're going to find an excuse. When it's important to you, what God promised you, when it becomes ingrained in your heart and you know what God say in his word and you know those promises are true and you know it's coming for you, you ain't gonna make no excuse not to get it. You ain't gonna make no excuse not to get it. You keep your eyes on the goal and remember God's promises.
because when you know how important it is, like I said, when you know how some, how important something is to you, when it becomes uncomfortable enough in one part of your life, you will do something else to get out of it. When you get tired enough, you will do something to change it. When you start concentrating on what God has promised you and what God has told you, you are going to do whatever you need to do to make it happen. So concentrate on your reward. The moment you start realizing that God's rewards are greater than your excuses. Say that again, Samantha. <laughs> the moment you start to realize that God's rewards are greater than your excuses is when you will start being more responsible, more accountable, and more devoted to being doing what God's telling you to do. The more you start to go after what God said you can have, the more you'll stop making excuses. Y'all hear me? All right. So listen, I hope somebody was blessed by this word. I got a challenge for y'all and I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you. I want you to take an action. This is an action challenge that I am giving to you guys. It's a 30-day action challenge. It's simple. It's simple. Go 30 days without making a single excuse. Go 30 days. You know, they say you do something for 21 days, it becomes a habit. I always tell people to do it for 30 days so you can solidify it. So go 30 days without making a single excuse. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. That scripture is not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. I'm telling y'all now. But you may, you will actually be surprised at how much more productive you become, how much more devoted you become, how much more focused you become. You'll be surprised. And how much more you get done when you stop making excuses in your life. And then you'll also be surprised at how many excuses you actually do make. Tamarsha, I think I'm saying your name right. All right, let's get it. Kernita, y'all say I'm in. We, let, let's get it. Leandria, 87. No excuses for 30 days. Watch how your life start to turn around. Watch how clear you start to hear God. And we need to hold each other accountable. Let me write your name down. <laughs> I'm going to write down everybody's name so I can send out a message in my um, inbox. Because y'all think I'm playing. I'm going to 100% hold you accountable. Hold on. I'm trying to remember. I got... Um, I'm missing the name. Okay, I got... Kernice, I got you. Leandra, 87, I got you. Fields, girl, F-I. How about y'all send me a message? <laughs> hold on, y'all. Hold on. Um, is it G-U-R-L? It's going up fast, so my bad. Okay, and then Lovelate underscore 29. I'm going to hold y'all accountable. I'm not playing. And I don't want to hear no excuse as to why not. Why you didn't do what you're supposed to do today? I don't want to hear no excuses. Kiwa, I hope I'm saying your name right. Kiwa underscore J. All right, I'm writing down everybody's name. Island Beauty. I, I don't know if you said you in, but um, Marky Do. I hope I'm writing it right name right. All right, so I have, and if I miss your name, my bad, just tell me. Quality for real. 
I'm going to put you down, Island Beauty. I don't know if you said it, but I just believe since you just be rocking with me the way you do, that you're going to be in. I'm going to hold you to it, okay? All right, so I have, what's Island underscore Beauty? 003. All right, so I got Marky Duke, Quality underscore For Real. Kernice, I know your name, but um, Leandra 87, Feels Girl, Love Late underscore 28, 29, Kiwa underscore J in the Island Beauty. So y'all let me know if I missed you, if I did, my bad. Um, um, send me a message, let me know, right? Yeah, we just gonna do it. Like, I don't know. Like, honestly, this is just a challenge I came up with. So however God tell me to do it, right? Um, if I'm a, I'll probably put us all in a group or something. I don't know, just to kind of hold each other accountable. And we're going to just check in, you know what I'm saying? So 30-day challenge, no excuses. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. I'm going to do it too. And for a bonus, just for a bonus, I want you to add no complaining. No complaining to your no excuses. No complaining. Because there's nothing that's going to help you. Neither one of them. And I got a book that I want to recommend. Hold on. So, I like to read so I could read it in a month. But it's called The Power of Self-Discipline, No Excuses by Brian Tracy. I want y'all to get it. Right? Because we, we need to come out of this. Come out of the excuses. We need to start hitting our goals, making things happen, growing in our relationship with God, saving souls, doing what God telling us to do. Like, it's just enough is enough. All right, so I got y'all all on here. I'm going to write this down. So we starting tomorrow. Today already gone. Whatever excuses you made, whatever complaining you did, get it all out now. Because they don't lie. Because God going to know. And God talked to me a lot. So I'm going to know too. Okay? T. Cuffy, thank you for your badge. So 30 days, y'all. 30 days. You get the book. No excuses. Brian Tracy. All right? I hope this has blessed you. It blessed me. So I'm grateful for each and every one of y'all. Um, Marky Do says, I just ended a relationship. I needed the Holy Spirit to not go back. And my yes is yes. Yes, honey, let's get it. I love that. Let's get it. Because we ain't going back to nothing toxic. Some bridges need to be burned. Because some stuff you do not need to go back to. Facts. So let's go. I am excited for each and every one of y'all. Um, Kernice, did you get the book? It's called No Excuses by Brian Tracy. No excuses. All right. So if I missed your name, I see you. Um, Alford, Alford, Alice. I don't know what that said, but I'm going to write your name down, okay? But if I missed your name or if you want to, you know, join in, we're going to make it happen, right? I'm going to pray about it and see what God want me to do because it literally just came to me. It was just something that I, that I actually was like, all right, let's do it. So, you know, but I want to see, you know, how it works and how I really want to hear like reports of, you know what I'm saying? How y'all grow from this. Like, I think it's going to really help you. I really do. So we are down to 4% on my battery, y'all. So. Let's get it then. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to put together a little group. Um, like I said, if I, uh, I don't know, whatever God lead me to do. I don't know if we're going to pray together, which we can. You know, if y'all want to read together, we can do that as well. I am, you know, open to suggestions. But, of course, I'm going to pray about it. I want God to lead me in this. But, yeah, I missed you. I'm sorry. A R S-H-A-Y-J-A-L-Y-N. Arsha, 
Arshay, Arshay, Jalen. I hope I said that right. Listen, y'all can't be signing up just because you know everybody else doing it, and then you want to be a part. You want to be a part of it. And we got it. This for real. Ain't nobody playing no games in this group. But I got you, Nikki. I ain't saying you you playing games, girl. But come on. Nikki underscore Nikki underscore Nikki. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, but so let's get it, man. Um, let's get it. I am going to pray about it as soon as I get off the live, honestly. Um, and all right, Nikki, I believe you, girl. I'm going to pray about it. Like, I'm going to pray and cover each and every one of us for sure. Um, like I said, I'll create a group. I'll make it happen. Um and we'll, I'm going to let y'all know. Because at the end of these 30 days, we coming out. We coming out new women, new people, new men. I don't know if a man signed up or not. But we coming out. It's time to do what God's telling us to do. Like, no more excuses. 30 days. Starting tomorrow. What's the date? So, July the 20th. June the 20th. I got you tea, Cuffy, I think. I'm sorry, I don't. So T underscore Cuffy. Um, what is it? T underscore Cuffy. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, one and only underscore Shari. One and only underscore S H A R I. All right, bet. All right, I love y'all. My phone is legit on like 4%, so, and I got to call my baby girl, but I'm about to pray over us, and I'll, I'll let y'all know, I'm going to put us in a group, so don't, it ain't no spam or nothing, you know, um, if, if I, if I, I might ask for your emails, because it might be easier for us to, um, for me to email you, for us to connect like that, I don't know, you know, we might get together on a Zoom. I don't know. However God lead me, I just want us to, you know, come together. I think it'll be great for each and every one of us, honestly. So I hope this message touched someone. If it touched you, share it with someone. Love it, like it. Pour into my ministry. So into my ministry, I am appreciative. I've tagged, uh, pinned it rather. I pinned my cash app and I pinned my Zelle. So if you want to soar into the ministry, I am grateful. Again, I appreciate every single thing that you sow. I don't care if it's a dime or penny, whatever. I'm grateful. It always goes right back to God. I do nothing but give what you all give me back to him and help build his kingdom. So I'm going to be in touch, though. I'm going to hit y'all up tomorrow. Um, so y'all be on the lookout and let's get it. But I love each and every one of y'all. You're welcome. And so... I'll see y'all next week, Wednesday, 6.30. Deuces.